that is time-space travel. And I, I firmly believe that some of those are like that because uh, the history of the world has been that the wrong individual getting that information can use it uh, for a lot of destructive things. Not everyone would use it for the betterment. Almost any, anything you can think of can be turned around to be used as a weapon. And when you get into these kind of energy, energy time transitions, whatever, I, then that's, I, can't, I can't think of the best word. Um, it's, it's, it's what Tom Bearden says, that they could be used to just wipe out whole segments of the population and, and the earth, as well as they could be made to, to liberate us from all dependence on fossil fuels. Well, first of all, the, bl the, anti the ballistic missile defense system is probably um, a pipe dream in the sense that um, if what it's designed for is the, that you know where it's coming from. And when we had Russia, there was a 50-50 chance that you, you knew about where it would be coming from. Um, with the rogue nations we have today, it's absolutely ludicrous. Um, it's the guy who walks in with the briefcase with, re re remember that in the 50s, they built a nuclear warhead that fit inside a Sparrow, AIM-7 Sparrow, which has an eight inch diameter body. And that was a quarter kiloton weapon. That'll fit inside any briefcase you can think of. Now the guy may die carrying it, but he's gonna die anyway, so what difference does it make? Uh, I'm far more feared of that than, if, if people can, if beings can travel in time space then anything we would put in orbit as a weapon would be like like going against Genghis Khan with a firecracker. You know, it, it, it doesn't make sense. Well, you know, when we talk about zero point energy, what that means is that when everything comes down to rest, there's still energy left. It's like sea level in, in, in the ocean. And there is a constant flow of energy between matter and antimatter as it annihilates itself and recreates itself. It, it occurs in stars. All of these big star factories you see now with Hubble is a continual exchange of energy. And although the average is zero, that zero may be a pretty high level above nothing at all. And what Sakharov and some of the physicists said is that it's this level that creates the background for the universe to exist. The, there's a group of Russians that use that tube to repeat an experiment that Tesla ran in Colorado Springs. When he ran it, he actually created, he tapped so much energy that the electric energy flowed back through the wire and actually destroyed the power, the, the power station at Colorado Springs. And when the Russians repeated it at Moscow Aviation Institute, they blew up the one megawatt power station at MAI. When I got involved in space again with Sandy McDonald, and we started the, what eventually became National Aerospace Plane, uh, I met a group of Russians over in England at a conference. And one of them had been involved in transmitting energy from an antenna on the ground to a satellite in orbit back down to Moscow with only about 10-15 percent losses. And he said the reason we can do this is this is a scalar wave projector and here's what it uses. And he opens up his loose leaf binder and says now you can't take any pictures of this or make any sketches, just look at it and lo and behold there's the tube I saw in Smilian, Yugoslavia. <laughs> and this was the antenna that what Casper Weinberger was saying was the anti-ballistic missile thing and he told me even then he says you know if you ever go in the building all you're going to see is an empty concrete building with a couple of cables because it's not an anti-ballistic missile radar it's a scalar wave transmitter and finally when the DOD got in there they found an empty concrete building with a couple of wires in it and they said oh they pulled everything out and Victor says it never was in there so they actually, he claims he, he transmitted up to 10 megawatts of power 
from this station to satellite to Moscow and got about eight and a half to nine megawatts of power back received in Moscow. Uh, so they were on the verge of understanding how you do some of these um, unconventional things. Um, but I th all of that is now gone. I don't know where he is. Uh, he lost his job. His institute disappeared. Um, so a lot of that work just collapsed in the Soviet Union. That's the same tube that Tesla says he could transmit energy to Mars, the surface of Mars, and support a human colony or to the surface of the moon. So once you, make a, once you break, that, break through that and you actually do that, then just think of the whole that then fuel doesn't become a problem anymore in orbit. You just use one of these tubes to generate the power directly to the right antenna, and you, you, can, you can fly to the moon, you can fly in orbit, you can do anything you want. I, I think it's like a lot of things, the people that, if there are a group of people in the world that, are, that have access to it, I don't think they know how to let go of it because they're afraid who's going to get their hands on it. Even though there'd be a tremendous benefit to mankind in, in, in getting us energy sources that we wouldn't um, have the problems we have with today, they're also worried about that somebody could take that same energy source and do the equivalent of what they did with the coal of instead of blowing a hole inside, just obliterating the whole ship. So you don't, it's like trying to describe uh, Casper the Goat, the friendly ghost. Uh, you might see a cartoon of him, but you don't know how big he is, you don't know where his funding comes from, you don't know how many there are because of the compartmentalization and the oath that people have to take. Um, I mean, I know people today that worked on one of the things that I worked on, that if you ask them, Did you, do you recognize this name, they would, even if I can show it to you on the internet, there's some things that have come up recently on the internet where some of the stuff that I was associated with, their names are now on the internet. They would say, no, that's, I have no idea what you're talking about. In their, in their 70s now. But they still absolutely would never admit that they even know what you're talking about. So you don't know. You have no idea. But it's probably, it's probably larger than you think. And again, that there's a reason for it, and that is you don't want people who would be hostile to you to know what it is you could do to them if they really caused a major catastrophe. Uh, because if they knew that, you wouldn't prevent them from doing it. They would just do it another way. And that's, that's the hard thing to do this today. I mean, who would ever think in Japan that a group of Japanese citizens who are normally the most controlled individuals you've ever seen would release sarin gas in their, in their underground uh, metropolitan train system? I, I, it just blew my mind that, that they, would, they, they did that.